Well, Topaz have done it again. There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.1.0. This is their largest update since the release of Topaz Photo AI. We're going to get a look at some of the new features today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. We're looking at the new version of Topaz Photo AI. This is 1.1.0. As I said in the intro, this is the largest update since the release of Topaz Photo AI. So we're going to get a look at it today. I've made a list of some of the features that I think are most notable with this new release. And the first one is a new AI model for the raw denoise strong option. Secondly, there's a new AI model for noise detection used in autopilot. They've done a complete rewrite of the preview panel for improved performance. I know they've been working on this for a while. There's also AI brush performance improvements. And finally, these are what we're going to look at today. I think you're all going to like this. The AI brush now has a set of brush sizes to choose from. I still think it needs more work, and I'll talk about that in the video. But this is good. And they've also added, and here's a big one, undo and redo shortcuts for the AI brush. And I must say, I'm a big fan of this. And by the way, let me know in the comment section below what you think of Topaz Photo AI so far. And let me know also what you think you would like to see improved with Topaz Photo AI. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing Topaz Photo AI or any of the Topaz products, just click on my affiliate link. It's right below in the description of this video. It'll take you right here where you can purchase the products, update your products, whatever you need to do, like renew a license. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission and you're helping to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I want to really thank each and every one. Now let's go ahead and check out this new update. Really what I want to show you today is the new AI brush feature. So let's just jump right into that. This image is a raw file. Photo AI has already scanned it. It's using the autopilot settings. Now, the AI brush is used with the sharpen module. So if I open up the sharpen module and we come down here, see where it says subject only. If I hover right here, you can see it's found this area in red as the subject. Okay, now we can add to that subject or take away from that subject. In other words, that would be the area that would get the actual sharpening. Now, when Photo AI scans your image, it determines if the image actually needs sharpening, and it usually gets it right. But here's what we need to do if we want to actually refine the sharpening. We need to come up here to the top of the interface, see where it says refine, and if you click on this, and now we can see there's that area of the image in red, okay? And right now it says default. By default, it's looking for a subject. You can also choose portrait, landscape, or none. It's totally up to you, but they give you a lot of choices here. But I usually like to start out with default. And I believe if you come up here to preferences, and you'll notice we have autopilot configuration. Right now it's grayed out. If I wanted to change, say I do a lot of portraits, I may want to start out with a portrait. Or if I do a lot of landscapes, I want to start out with a landscape, or I want none. It's We have choices here. But to set that, what we need to do, I'll just click done here and then come back over here to preferences and go to autopilot configuration. And then we have a choice here. You see mine is set for default, but you could set it for portrait if you want to or landscape or none. It's up to you, but I like to set it for default, but that's how you do it. I'll go ahead and click on refine so we can see these new AI brush features. Now, this is new. We have tiny, small, medium, and large. You may say, well, what is that all about? Well, let me show you. Let's start out with large. If I move my brush onto the image there, you see that little red swatch that's moving around there? It's finding edges and things like that on the image. And that's the large size. Okay, so let's just put one down. I'm just going to click right here. This is not an area I'd want to sharpen, but I just want to show you these different brush sizes. So let's click here. And now let's come here to medium and let's hover. And now you'll notice that brush size is smaller, right? Now it varies when I hover over different areas of the image because again, it's looking for edges. See how it's found that edge right there? But let's put that one down. So you can see that's the medium size. It's smaller. Here's large, here's medium. Let's go to small. And now you'll notice it's a lot smaller. And I'll just click and leave that one there. And now let's go to tiny. 
And now you can see it's a real tiny. Let me click right there. See, it's small. And I'll show you how this works because what I'll do is I'll select this part of the, I think it's like a hyacinth. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but I'm going to select this whole area right in here. And I'll use the different brush sizes to do it. But the other feature I want to show you is an undo feature. So you can do a command or control Z, whatever you have a Mac or PC to undo. For a Mac, it's command Z. So if I do command Z, this small brush stroke will go away. Watch command Z, it goes away. And if I do a shift command Z, it'll come back. So we can undo and redo. And you can also come up here to edit and do undo mass stroke. And there's my shortcut. And if you have a PC, it'll tell you what your shortcut is. It's probably control Z and it's probably shift control Z for redo. So I could do command Z. There's that first stroke. Command Z again. There's a second stroke. Or if you come over to the interface on the right side, if you want to clear all your strokes and start again, you can just click right here, clear strokes, and they go away. Now the original subject that photo AI has found will never go away. That'll stay there. Let me show you how we could select this here. So let's start out. I'm going to try large. I'm going to click on large and hover over here. See, if I hover over here, it's getting too much outside of this area, which I wouldn't want. So I'll move it in. I'll click here, click here. I'll fill in as much as I can with large. See, and that's overshooting a little bit there. So now I've done everything I can with large. Let me, yeah, see there. No, I could get this one right here. I'll just click on that. And now I'll go to medium and see what I can do. See, medium is going to work well here. See how nice this is going to be? So I'll just click that once. If I come here, I can click it. See, there it goes too far. Up there, it goes too far. Down here, it'll work. Here, I could use it. Here, down here, I could use it. And now for these other areas, I could come here. Let's try small. See, now I can fill this in with small. See how nice this is? And then we can click it. So this is a really nice uh, addition. And let's go to tiny. And let's see if I can get this little area here. But you notice when I hover over, you can see it's finding edges. So let's hover over this area right here. And it overshoots it. See, it's not going to work right. So here is an issue I have. I wish Topaz would simply give us a regular brush that we could adjust the softness of its edge and adjust its size. A non-AI brush that I could just simply make a small brush size and just paint in this area right there. I think they really need that. I hope you're listening, Topaz. Can't you add that? I mean, if you can make an AI brush, why can't you make just a basic brush to fill in an area the AI is struggling with? I think that would be great. Let me know in the comment section below if you think that's a good idea, because if they could do that, this would be perfect. I really like these new brush sizes. I think this is really helpful. And I do like the fact that we can undo and redo brush strokes now. And also, don't forget the shortcut. If you're painting something in and now you want to erase something, you can just hold down your control key and click over the area to erase something. And then when you release the control, you'll be back to adding. So that's kind of nice too. And once you're happy with the mask you've created, all you need to do is click done. And then if you come up here and hover over subject, you can see there's the area that I have added. I'm going to click on sharpen and open this up. But you can see we have a toggle here for subject only. And if I hover over subject only, you can see the area that will get the sharpening, right? So take note of this right here. I'm going to click this eye here and watch this area that I've added. See how it's out of focus there? And now when I click it again, you can see how it's sharpened that area up. If you don't want to use the masking, all you need to do is toggle this subject only off. And now it will not sharpen those areas. But if you turn it on, you'll see those areas like right here and here it gets sharpened up. Well, there you go, everyone. This is a new update for Topaz Photo AI version 1.1.0. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.